Hey guys, how are you going? Well, it's Boxing Day here in Sydney. It had a very nice Christmas day, nice and relaxed, but apart from that, we have some movie news to talk about. One piece in particular caught me by total surprise. I didn't think it'd be so soon, but we actually have, I guess you could say, a teaser trailer or a proper trailer for Rebel Moon Part 2, the Scar Giver due out in April. That's a damn quick turnaround considering Rebel Moon has just started doing the rounds on Netflix. The reception has been a very mixed bag. I, for one, am still very mixed about it. I definitely found fun and enjoyment in the film, but it is by no means a perfect film. It's unfortunately let down by a very weak story and some very weak dialogue. But from what we can see in the trailer, the going definitely gets going. We've set everything up in part one, Child of Fire. Now we have part two, The Scar Giver, coming in April. What I love about it is it's definitely following that continuity because everything was shot in one go. This is essentially a five hour film that has been cut into two. This is gonna be on Netflix as well. I think it's an absolute shame that part one and part two aren't gonna have a cinematic release. I was fortunate enough to see it in a cinema in Tokyo and the sound design was absolutely brilliant. And I feel like they dropped the ball by not doing maybe a limited cinematic release all over the world, who knows, but just have it on streaming. It just seems like such a letdown. But from what I can see so far in this teaser trailer slash trailer, things look promising, things look good. We see everyone gearing up to go up against the big guy played by Ed Screen. And I love the fact that we get the return of Anthony Hopkins as Jimmy the Robot. I wanted to see so much more of Jimmy in part one. Unfortunately, that was not the case. I definitely want to see Jimmy have more screen time this time and even fight alongside everyone. And once again, the visuals look great. Like, like I said in my review for part one, you can always rely on Zack Snyder delivering some damn beautiful visuals, sound design. He was the cinematographer on Rebel Moon part one and part two, which is great. I, I definitely think he missed his calling of being a full-time cinematographer for that matter. Like there are definitely some things that he should leave by the wayside, like writing. And it's, again, not a dig. You just have to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Yeah, but overall, the Scar Giver does look very promising, but my biggest worry is because this was all shot at once, it's gonna have the same bad dialogue and weak storytelling that part one had. But again, visually, it looks great. We see some reoccurring characters that I thought did not survive in part one. I'm not gonna go into specifics of that just in case it's a bit of a spoiler. But for the most part, if it is gonna be all one cohesive piece just split in two, we're gonna have the same problem with part two as we had with part one. Either way, I'm very excited to see where this goes. And I hope that part two goes out on a bang and is much better than its predecessor. Second round of movie news. We have two new stills from Joker 2, courtesy of Todd Phillips. It's obviously Christmas Day over in the States, and for Christmas Day, Todd Phillips gifted us with two new stills from Joker Part 2. We see Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck in what looks like a cell in Arkham Asylum, and then in the second image, we see Arthur Fleck in his Joker makeup accompanied by Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn, or Dr. Harleen Quinzel this time around, before she becomes Harley Quinn. I'm pretty sure her name's Harleen Quinzel. Stand by. Joker 2. Okay, so they don't actually list that she's named Harley Quinn. Okay, yeah, there we go. Lady Gaga as Dr. Harleen Quinzel slash Harley Quinn. You know, sometimes they change things like case in point, they change the Joker's name to Arthur Fleck, which I think is kind of subjective because the Joker has an array of names. But this makes me really excited. I love that Todd Phillips has just treacled out little bits here and there. Joker 2 is due out later next year, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. The whole notion of it being possibly a partial musical, I am not keen for at all, but it could be one of those things where it's been lost in translation when it comes to movie news, entertainment news and stuff like that. It does look very existential with some of the behind the scenes set photos we've seen out on the street of what looks like Arthur running away from himself or a version of himself, whether or not that's a dream sequence, who knows. But at this point, I'm really excited to see where it goes because again, the first Joker for me back in 2019 was a total surprise. I thought it was going to be just one of those things where you forget about it a couple of days later, but that film has stuck with me. It was so damn well, you know, very reminiscent of Taxi Driver, the king of comedy, very Scorsese, but utilizing the world of Gotham and the Joker. And that's pretty much it, guys. Just a quick little movie news update today. Like I said, we had the trailer for Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Again, holding out hope to how it's gonna be. I, I just hope it's just not gonna be the same wash, rinse, and repeat that we had with part one. You know, if we just had some better dialogue and just not a massive exposition dump for two and a bit hours, then I think this could be an improvement over part one. And as for those Joker 2 images, love it. Subtle, doesn't give too much away, and just makes you think, what's the dynamic between Joker and Harley gonna be like? Love you guts, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>